Hello everyone. So I'm Darko. I'm a JavaScript team lead at Infinum. Uh, and I'll talk today to about uh, making React part of something greater. So what does, that, what does this, that mean? So first, I'll talk a little about React for those people who don't know what it is or didn't use it, so they get familiar with it. And after that, I'll talk about uh, React state management uh, libraries, so libraries that you can use uh, to manage your application state, how your application works, your business logic. And uh, finally, I'll compare two of those libraries that I used uh, most recently. And I would like to know that uh, this will kind of be biased because, well, it's based on my opinion how they work. It's, so it's my opinion, it, your mileage might vary. So keep that in mind. So first, uh, React. So React was uh, created by Facebook. Uh, and uh, React is not a framework. That's important to, notice, to note. So React is kind of a view library for the web. Uh, so, what are the weird parts, I guess, uh, for new, new people that uh, start using React? First one is, so you open a, an example React app, uh, you open a app.js, for instance, and you see HTML in it. So, and you, you think, what's going on here? Uh, well, that's JSX. So, uh, since writing components, it's kind of verbose, React made a special language that simplifies that. So you can write it, and it, lo it looks something like, like HTML. Uh, of course, you can do it without it, but I wouldn't recommend it, because it's much more code, and it's much harder to read. Uh, the second weird part is that you need to uh, uh, change the way you're thinking about web. Uh, I'll come to that later when I'll talk about uh, virtual DOM. Uh, and the third part is that uh, React components have their own state, and that can be great for smaller applications, but as the applications grow, you'll probably notice that this is kind of an ATI pattern, I guess. So the components shouldn't have the state because you have some other advantages then. So the good parts of React, so as, as I mentioned before, is virtual DOM. What that means is that you don't need to uh, take care of the changes you want to make. You just say to it, I want this on my screen. And React will calculate all the differences between the initial state and the new state and do it for, your, uh, for you. And why is this important is because it will minimize the number of actions it needs to do on the DOM. And DOM by itself is pretty slow. So that makes uh, React uh, uh, a fast uh, alternative to it. Now, uh, since I mentioned that React is kind of a view layer, if we tr try to fit it into an MVC, you'll see that React is a view component uh, plus uh, event handling from the controller, I guess, and the UI state that could fit into a model, for, for instance. And there are actually two things that uh, are left. That's application state and uh, business logic. And we can, uh, we can call it with one name, and that's uh, state management. So since it's only two small parts of the boxes, you might think that's pretty easy to do, and I can do it myself. Yeah. Of course, you can. Uh, you, you can, for instance, have a, a plain JavaScript object for model and have a service file for your business logic. But uh, that can be pretty problematic when you try to make it fast. Because uh, the way React works, it re-renders your whole, your whole component. And the tricky part here is to tell React which components to re-render. Because if you try to re-render every the whole application on every sta state change, that will be slow. Uh, and, uh, well, I, as I mentioned, uh, React components have uh, their in internal state, but it's kind of tricky. So it's asynchronous, and in 99% of the uh, cases, it will work just fine. But there's this is one part of the ca use cases that will be problematic. And also, if you are doing your own solution, there's this thing about standards. And as 
I think we don't need more standards. Uh, second poss possibility is, well, if it's kind of a view component, why wouldn't I use uh, MVC framework and just replace the view with React? And that's also possible. So some people did make this. So they use Backbone because of their controllers, routers, uh, collections, and models. And it works. So there are some projects that are in production right now that use this model. But uh, again, the same problem. Backbone is not optimized for React, and React is not optimized for Backbone. So it will have performance issues. Uh, uh, another use case that might be good for this is if you have a legacy app, for instance, Backbone here, and you want to migrate to React as a full-fledged React application. It might be a good uh, step, first step to replace your views with uh, React components and then re remove other parts of Backbone and replace them with some other library. Uh, of course, those are kind of the solutions that try to fit in something we already know, but there are some libraries that were made just for this purpose. So first one is Flux. Uh, Flux was uh, made by Facebook also. It was published in 2014. And it uh, features an under, under direction, undirectional uh, architecture. What that, that means is that uh, data goes down from the stores to the views, and the actions go up from the views to the stores. And the diagram looks something like this. So when you, for instance, click on a button, the view would uh, create an action which would go all the way here, and it would, uh, the store would receive it. And then the store would change its state, and the view would be re-rendered. Of course, this is just a simple app, because in most cases, you'll need more than one view on, and more, more than one store. And the bigger application would look something like this. So uh, you would create more stores and more views. And the important thing is, here is when you trigger an action, all the stores receive that action, and they decide by, by themselves it, if they should react to that particular action. Uh, that uh, lowers the complete uh, complexity because every store uh, keeps track of itself. And uh, uh, as you might notice, the store is the one holding both the business logic and the application state. Uh, and only the store is allowed to change it. The only way you ch for you to change the store is to trigger an action. Uh, all actions in Flux are synchronous, so it's easier to work with them, so no race conditions or whatever problem you might have. And uh, if you have some async actions in your app, like uh, Ajax calls, you would actually trigger two uh, Flux actions. So for instance, uh, API start load and API loaded, or something like that. Uh, the second library for state management is uh, Redux. Uh, Redux is based on flag, Flux, but uh, it has a few different concepts. So uh, in uh, Flux, you could have multiple stores. In Redux, you should only have one store. Uh, also, also, the store doesn't uh, modify itself. Uh, reducers are used for that here. So uh, you, you have one store, but you can have multiple uh, reducers, and they contain the business logic. Uh, also, one more important difference is that the, st the state in Redux is immutable. That means that if you have to change something, you first need to make a copy of it and th then change the copy. Uh, that has uh, a really uh, that enables some really cool features that I'll talk later. So this is how the Redux flow looks. So the UI would trigger an action, it would go to the reducer, reduce, reducer would create a new state, put it into the store, and the view would be re-rendered. Uh, one uh, great thing about uh, Redux and its immutable state it, is that it uh, enables uh, time travel, and not this time travel. Uh, it enables you to play back all the actions that happened. So you can either turn off partic some particular actions that happened, or you can ju just grab a slider and slide through the history. And uh, the Redux DevTools are responsible for that. 
Uh, the bad thing about, about Redux is that uh, it's a lot of boilerplate code. So uh, if you want to do an action, you'll probably need to change about three or four files, add some constants, add uh, three or four functions, and that's hard to maintain. And uh, that's why I uh, turned to Mobix, the third library, and I used it recently in a project f for work. And uh, this is some, uh, how the Mobix flow goes. So an action happens, that might be a click or something. It will change our state, which is observable. Uh, based on that, the computed values will be updated, and based on, on both the observables and the computed values, the observers or our components will also update. Uh, the, uh, the one interesting thing about Mobix is that they are much smarter than uh, Redux, because uh, they know what's exactly changed in the store, and they won't be updated if, if nothing relevant has, has changed has changed. Uh, that's why uh, Mobix is a lot faster in most cases. So this is a benchmark made by the Mobix, Mobix author and the Redux author also confirmed the results. So, uh, so the blue is the basic uh, re Redux case. The yellow is the uh, orange is the more complicated Redux app. And the yellow is the Mobix app. So the differences can be about 10 times faster. Uh, now, there are some syntax changes in Mobix. So it uses decorators, which are those things with add at the beginning. Uh, they're supported in TypeScript, and you can use a plugin for Babel. Uh, it's uh, not a standard feature in JavaScript, so no browser support it yet, but it's on, on its way to standard, standardization. Uh, however, uh, decorators are not a requirement for usage, just like JSX is not a requirement for React. But it makes your code more readable and smaller. Uh, there are some more alternatives, uh, like, like uh, Relay. It's also made by Facebook. Uh, but it, the thing why, you might not, why it might not be a good fit for you is because it's based on GraphQL. And depending on your API, uh, it would be hard to adapt. And uh, the second uh, option is RxJS. And it's, it's not meant for that, but it can be made to work with it. So someone made a RxJS library that works like, a, like a Redux. So it can work with that, but I don't recommend it. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I'll compare two of them, and that's uh, Redux and Mobix. So the main differences are that uh, Redux has a bigger community, and it has better dev tools. Uh, on the other hand, Mobix is faster, and it's more, more flexible. I, I found that it's much easier to solve some edge case problems with Mobix, because it allows you to do more without constraining you to, to the way of thinking uh, of uh, Redux. And another big difference is that uh, uh, Redux is, um, uh, uh, contains a lot less magic, but on the other hand, Mobix has a lot less boilerplate code. Uh, OK, let's, let's look at an example. For instance, a conference app that uh, needs to load the talks from the API, and then you can select the talks you plan to attend. So first, you need to set up your stores, so something where you'll store your data. Uh, in Redux, you would create a reducer. So a reducer is a function that receives the uh, old state, which can be the default state. It uh, receives an action, and based on that, it will do something. In this case, it will just return the state it received. Uh, in Mobix, you create an observable. So observable, in this case, is basically just an object with a list array and a loading flag. Uh, that was also the same objects we use in the Redux example as the default state. Uh, after that, we'll probably want to load some data from the API. Uh, with Redux, we'll dispatch an event from, I don't know, from the component or, or from somewhere, somewhere else. And then in the actions file, we would dispatch an event, uh, an action 
for instance, talk list load. We, uh, we would load the actual talk, so I'm cheating here a little, so I'm, I'm using await and async. Uh, and then once you got the results back, you would dispatch a new action which has a new name, and you would uh, pass along the results. And then in the reducer, you would need to handle that. So you would copy the old state. Uh, in this case, you would uh, put the results into the list, and you would change the loading flag. Uh, in Mobix, you would uh, call the action function from component or also what, wherever. Uh, and at that point, you would have a talks object that's observable, that's your state, and you would just change the loading to true, uh, load the talks, and uh, put uh, set loading back to false. It looks uh, much shorter because of the uh, because of the less boilerplate code. And the third thing we want to do here is to choose a, uh, choose the topics we want to hear about. Uh, now, uh, here's a Redux example. So, for instance, we click a plus button or something in the UI, we would uh, dispatch an action, which would actually return, in actions, it would return an uh, object with that action name and uh, par parameter. And at that point, in the reducer, we would actually need to modify our state. That means that we would need to create a new state and also create a new list with, I don't know, 30, uh, 29 talks that are the same and one talk that we would need to copy first, modify it, and put it into the same place into the array before we return the new state. That's kind of complex. Uh, on the Mobex side, we would just call a, a action function, and we would set the selected to true. Uh, now, if, if you think that uh, the selected pr uh, property shouldn't be on the talk object, because it's uh, avoid, uh, it's not uh, really object-oriented, uh, well, yeah, I, I agree, but it's a good example of instead, uh, no matter what. And uh, since this, this is a short example, I actually put here another one. Uh, so how to uh, create a computed property? Basically, you would just uh, take it as observable we already have and uh, create a getter, which would return the filtered list, and we would mark it as at computed. Uh, now, this function would be called only when something relevant changes. So either something is removed from the list that has selected true, or something is added to the list that has selected true, or something has changed the selected value. So if we change the title of any talk, this won't be re-evaluated. That's the power of Mobix. Uh, now, you might think, well, this might be dangerous, so just changing the values here and there. And that's true. That's why Mobix has a strict, strict mode. And if you turn on the strict mode, it will throw an exception in this case. Uh, and if you want to change the state, you'll actually need to mark your functions as, as actions. So at that point, it's much uh, easier to know what changes your state. And there's no mistakes. Uh, for, for instance, you, you won't by mistake, change the property in your uh, component. Uh, so, OK, le le enough about Mobix. Let's talk more about Mobix. Uh, Mobix also have dev, has dev, dev tools. It has three options. First one is it uh, can show you which components are repainted on every change, uh, re-rendered. Uh, that's useful for uh, quick overview. So if you change something and too many components re-render, then it's probably some issue on your side. Uh, the other useful option is you can see the dependencies of every component. Uh, so you basically click on any of your components, and it will show you a dialog which will reference all the uh, properties in your state that uh, will influence that component. And the third option is that, uh, it can just outputs everything it does in the console. So uh, for every your action, for instance, click, it will show all the actions, so all state changes. And it will show all the reactions, so all re-renders or everything else. And it will also show uh, which of them happened because of what other thing. Uh, uh, Mobix uh, community is growing, and it has 
a lot of uh, related projects. For instance, you can use it with uh, React, React Native, Meteor. Uh, you can connect to Firebase. You have different routers, models, forms, loggers, whatever. And since uh, we at Infinum worked on a pro project with Mobix for the last three months, uh, we also open sourced some things. So uh, we have a library for translating your UI or uh, a, a libraries that manage your different types of stores, so key store, JSON API store, if you are using it. And we plan to op open source some other things. There's some other resor uh, resources up out there. And the final question is, should you use Mobix? And the, question, the answer is pretty obvious. It depends. So it depends first on your own preferences. So do you like to uh, work with magic, with something that you're not sure how it works? Or do you, uh, would you rather write some more code, but you know exactly what happens? And other thing is uh, it depends on your project. So uh, on, uh, my personal opinion is that M Mobix is better suited for most of the projects compared to Redux. But again, th that depends on, on your use case. And that's all, that's all for me.